Welcome back to chapter four. It's the last portion of the chapter four lecture videos, and we've got one last example video in this section. Uh, and it's not a distinctly different problem type, but it looks different enough, and there are some key details that we wanted to give it its own separate video. So the problem type itself uh, tends to be called a hanging rope problem. And the idea is there are ropes and other forces that are holding an object in place. And there may be multiple forces that we need to solve for, but the fact that it's not moving tells us that the net forces are going to be adding up to zero in both the x direction and in the y direction. This is sometimes called translational equilibrium, and we are going to see a more complete understanding of um, equilibrium when we get to chapter nine. But uh, this is a situation where the forces are zero and the velocity is zero. This could work if an object were moving at a constant velocity, net force would still be zero. That's just not a problem type that we're gonna see in our curriculum. But this one we will and we need to recognize it. Okay, so let's talk through what makes this problem potentially complicated. Um, and we'll see some examples show up on the slides and we'll have one example that has its own video as well. So when we have a situation like this, there are several ropes, we are missing some force numbers, but we aren't trying to solve for an unknown acceleration because the net force is equal to zero. The key thing for these problem types is you will have to use f net x equals zero and f net y equals zero to solve the problem. So it's never a question of which one you write down. You'll need to write them both down and you'll need to use them both in problem solving. And so just being aware of that and using both at the beginning is going to be really helpful. So I've drawn the free body diagram and gone through the math in a color-coded way. What I'd like you to try before I um, show us that diagram is if you are able to, pause your video and try to draw the free body diagram for this situation before you see what it really looks like. So see if your thinking is on the right track for what forces we have and what direction they're pointing. Okay. So because we have two separate ropes, we have two separate tensions, and gravity points downwards, uh, and really important for us, if we are told something in newtons, that is already the force of gravity. If we are told something in kilograms, then we use the m times g equation for gravity. I've broken both tensions up into a vertical component and a horizontal component based on where the angles are. When we write down the x equation, the x component of tension two minus the x component of tension one equals zero. Because we have this um, symmetry, they're both 20 degrees, then each of those tensions is going to be equal to the other tension. So the x equation really just confirmed for us that T2 is equal to T1, and so we're able to just call it T for tension. Writing down the y equation then, and using this understanding that the two tensions are the same, we can now plug everything that we have in and solve for the unknown tension. In this case, it's 146 newtons. And it's worth noting that number value is bigger than the weight itself. If we imagine these two uh, ropes were both vertical and attached to this 100 newton fo uh, force, each rope would only have 50 newtons of tension in it. But if we start to think about as that angle gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the ropes are really playing tug of war with each other more than they're actually just trying to hold the weight up against gravity. As that angle got smaller and smaller, eventually the tension would get large enough that those ropes would break. All right, here's another example for us. And just like before, I will show us the answer, but I'd like you to try to pause the video and try it on your own first and see if you're on the right track. All right, 
So we want to draw the free body diagram. We need the x equation and the y equation. And so that's what that looks like here. And I've color coded them again. Gravity points straight down. Rope number two is pointing directly sideways. And rope number one is at an angle. So we break it up into sine and cosine components. In the y direction, we have enough information that we only have one unknown. So if we solve that first, then we can plug that unknown into the x equation. And we'll get 108 newtons for tension one, the rope that's at an angle. And we'll get 46 newtons for tension two, the rope that is sideways. This example with two different angles for the ropes is complicated enough that we're going to see the problem solving process in action. So it's example 4i and we'll have its own separate example video. The last couple of things I want to note here is for these types of problems, as long as the object is not moving, the net force is going to be zero. So we will see these kinds of situations where sometimes there is a rope or two that is pulling down at an angle. We still deal with it in the same way. Or there is a known push or a pull in the problem, often indicated by a helpful sidekick that is holding on to the object for us, that is um, a known force in the system. Oftentimes this even helps the algebra out a little bit based on how it's then able to have the, the box or um, thing being held. So let's see that one in action here too. I'm not going to have the whole um, number values out on this one because really the, the key is just making sure we know what forces are acting and in what direction those forces are acting. You're certainly welcome to um, finish the problem on your own. But here we have our uh, fancy assistant that is pulling to the right with a 110 newton force. So we want to set up the free body diagram showing the unknown tension in rope one and in rope two. So pause the video and try to draw that free body diagram. All right. Gravity, as a reminder, is not 20 times 9.8 because we were already given the weight in newtons. So gravity is just 20 newtons and it points straight down. Our assistance pull force is 110 newtons and it points directly to the right. Rope one points directly to the left. And then that rope two is at an angle. And so we break it up into components. Glancing at this free body diagram, hopefully we can start to recognize that if we looked at the y direction first, we'd be able to solve for tension two. And then once we wrote down the x direction, the only unknown we would have would be tension one and we'd be able to solve for it as well. So again, I'm not going to go through all the number values because it's very, very similar to the previous examples we've seen in the last couple of slides. The free body diagram is really our chance to see have we counted up all of the forces properly pointing in the correct directions. So this is the end of chapter four. And I do want to point out that chapter five is really just an extension of chapter four. We will see some tougher problems because there's one additional complication we can put into our list. But this, this slide right here really does get at all of the possible ways that the problems in chapter four can be complicated. And there are no tricks up our sleeves. We've shown how, and throughout the example problem videos, We've shown how to handle each of these tricks, each of these complications, using the same process um, from one to another. Every single example that we've seen uses F net equals MA, and just an awareness that vector direction matters quite significantly. So hopefully, after seeing a bunch of these and maybe re-watching some example videos, we'll be able to read the music, that underlying process behind each different problem. And in chapter five next week, we'll be able to see how that same process is being applied with one additional step, one additional complication. So I will see you in those next videos.